Tip one, grid mode is your friend. In this mode, your timeline's grid is adaptive and you can control it by zooming in or out. So I'll show you, I'll change this to grid mode and check this out. I can quickly make a two bar loop here and then click into it. I can zoom to eighth notes, grab this tom here or this uh, <laughs> kick drum here. I have an 808 patch in this Kong. Could put kicks here, here, here and here. Turn that click off. We could then zoom out to get to quarter notes. Grab this snare and put it where it goes. Duplicate it to the clap. We could then take this high conga here, zoom into 16th notes. Put one here. Right. Then we could grab this hi hat, leave it on eighth notes. Change the velocity of this one using the inspector. We'll get to the inspector soon. Duplicate this out. That's nice. And then we can make a little turnaround here by grabbing this last one, zooming into or zooming out to 16th notes, grabbing this pen tool, the multiple note pen tool, and then control the velocity of those three. Boom. You can see how quickly you can get a pattern together. Grid mode is also super handy for cutting and duplicating regions. So if I zoom in to quarter notes to cut the last quarter note off of this region, making the loop sound like this, If I duplicate that, it duplicates this way, and that's not really what you wanted to happen. You want it to duplicate like that. So in order to ensure that happens, zoom out to bar to bars and then duplicate. So this could be like a bunch of hi-hats too, um, you know, that are separate regions. If you zoom out to bar, they'll loop in a bar-like fashion. So that's super helpful too. Had to switch to voiceover on this one since it's hard to play and talk. The second tip is to use dub or alt tracks. Dub tracks are super useful in the writing process. I use them in the beginning when I'm writing with just piano. You can press comma to make another lane uh, that'll play in addition to the lane you just recorded. So great for accompanying yourself. So that's a dub track. There's also alt tracks, which happen if you press period. And those are handy if you play something, but you want to try something else. So I'm playing different chords in this case. So you can press comma for dub tracks and you can press period for alt tracks. You can also press the number six on your number pad for alt tracks and the number three on your number pad for dub tracks. And it works similarly on your audio tracks as well. Let's say you have an audio track that has a bunch of plugins on it and it's got something, you know, going on on it. Maybe this is a drum, maybe it doesn't matter. Uh, and you want another track, uh, you want to create a track with all the same settings, all the same plugins so that you can put something else in the same processing, under the same processing. You can press either comma or you can press the number three on your keypad, comma on your keyboard, number three on your keypad, on your number pad, and it'll make a dub track. That is a track that's empty, but has all the same processing inserted. So that's super handy um, throughout the production process when you want things to have the same or similar processing. You can also make an alternate track, uh, just, just like you can with the MIDI, by pressing period. It'll make a track with the same settings and 
it'll mute the original track. You're telling reason. I want to take a different approach at this. I want to try the same settings, but I want to do something different. Like this is coming out basically. Um, and you can also get there by pressing the number six on your key on your number pad. So that's dub and alt tracks, super helpful throughout the production process. Tip three, use the inspector to get things done faster. For example, let's say you have these two claps and you're layering them and you want to take the top clap and you want to pre-shift it a little bit. You want to move it forward in time. Instead of turning off snap and then moving it a little bit with the pointer, instead it's faster to just use the inspector to just move it a little bit forward in time. Probably too much. But let's say you like that. That's faster than, again, removing snap. The same is true for regions. Let's say for whatever reason you wanna nudge this region, it's faster to just nudge it using the position section here in the inspector than it is. And then also when you duplicate it, since you're on snap, it'll duplicate and keep that same amount of distance. So it'll duplicate in a relative kind of way. It's also handy when you have a region, of course, that you wanna move around in the same way. You can move it around. Also, you can move it by 16th note, by a full note, and by a bar. It can come in handy sometimes when you wanna move something quickly. It's also handy if you want to batch fade. Super handy to just add fades real quick to a bunch of regions using the inspector. The inspector is handy. Of course, you can control how loud something is really quick and you can just transpose a bunch of things too. So it's just super handy to use the inspector. Don't sleep on it. Tip four, sort selected device groups. So there's three main pages in Reason and keeping everything organized can be kind of annoying. So I have these tracks labeled one, two, three, four. And if I make them out of order, let's say I make them four, four, three, two, one, that's not reflected in my mixer and that's not reflected in my rack. And that can be annoying when you wanna move things around. Sometimes for me, I tend to move things in the sequencer because I, I stay here a lot. In order to make the rack and the mixer match up, you can select all of these, right click and sort selected device groups. Now the mixer is four, three, two, one and the rack is four, three, two, one. And you can do this in either direction. You can move things in the rack, sort selected groups, and it'll uh, reflect in the other area. Same if you make changes in the mixer. One, four, three, two. Sort selected device groups. One, four, three, two. One, four, three, two. So that's how you keep it in order. Sort selected device groups. The next tip for you beginners will help your drums sound better. Uh, and it's particularly to do with hi-hats. I have this Kong here that has a closed hi-hat and an open hi-hat, and it's important to put them on a choke group together. That is to say that when the open hi-hat plays, uh, it is interrupted by the closed hi-hat and vice versa. That is to say they can't play together because that's how hi-hats work in real life. It's one instrument, and when you're hitting it, if you open it, it's open, and when you close it to hit it again, it's closed. You can't make that open sound anymore. So. On Kong, in order to do that, you can hit this like quick, quick routing thing. I'm not sure how to say that. And just put them on the same mute group. I think it's these two. So mute group A. So that means these two will interrupt each other. So if we go ahead and make a pattern, maybe an eighth note pattern. If we do this, and then we take one of these, maybe this one. So that ensures that the second that this one comes in, it cuts this one off. If you have drum patterns where your open hat is still sizzling uh, while the new hat comes in, it just won't sound realistic. And that's a, that's a little tip for you beginners. Also, let me show you how to do that in Redrum too. In Redrum, in order to make sure your hats interrupt each other, put them on pads eight and nine. 
and then select this channel eight and nine exclusive. That'll make it so that they act in that monophonic behavior. And speaking of monophonic, let's show you how to do it in the NNXT just in case. For the NNXT, you load your sample and just make sure the polyphony is down to one. So you would load your two samples, basically your open hi-hat and your closed hi-hat. You have your polyphony to one on both and that'll make sure they interrupt each other. Key for hi-hats. And there you go. Five rapid fire beginner tips. I hope you find them helpful. I hope they get you started in this wacky music game. <laughs> Please follow me, uh, follow me on Instagram here, uh, or also here. Um, also, oh, I'm gonna be live streaming soon, so stay tuned for that. A uh, whole lot of new stuff going on. Yeah, subscribe, stay tuned, like this video, please. Uh, hit the comments, do all the stuff, bye.